Well, it's good to see everybody today. You can hear me now. Uh, you know what's really good about today? I mean, besides the fact that it's the first full day of spring, but a year ago this Sunday was our first Sunday where we were like exclusively online, where we really started to have to isolate from each other. And obviously for a lot of us, it's been, that was really hard. It's still really hard even being in here with masks, but we're together. And God has brought us through in the last year. So I am so glad to see your faces. I wish I could see your mouths. <laughs> but that, that day's coming. That day's coming. But yeah, thanks for coming out today. Well, we are continuing our series on wisdom for life in the wild. Uh, we're, we're going through the book of Proverbs and some of the other wisdom writings of scriptures, and we're talking about things to help us get through this crazy thing we call life. Um, and we've, we've looked at a number of topics, and we're, we're nearing the end of, of this series. But today we're going to talk about one that hopefully for a lot of us should be sort of a duh kind of thing, but maybe not as much of an obvious thing as, as it should be. But today we're going we're to talk about honesty. Um, and so, so feel free to put your toes underneath your chairs. Um, you know, a couple weeks ago when I spoke, God really kind of beat me up on the topic of contentment. And I was really praying that that would not be the case this time with the topic of honesty. Uh, although I have to admit that there was quite a bit of, uh, I deal with that too. Um, and there was quite a bit of, wow, we as a church are not that great. And I don't necessarily mean EBC, but we as a, a church globally have issues with stuff like this. But this is a topic that is very important to us in how we represent Christ to the world and how we represent Christ to each other. And so I'm hoping that today, that as we just look in the book of Proverbs and other passages that we would really get a true sense of why honesty and truth are so important to the Lord and, and why it's important for us as believers um, to reflect that well in our, in our communities. So uh, pray with me uh, and we'll get started. Father, thank you for waking us up this morning to sunshine, to... As I was reminded by Vincent Moore to birds singing. Thank you for bringing us into this room together after a really hard year. And certainly we are not promised that tomorrow will be good or even later this afternoon. Uh, but we are promised that you are good and that we can trust you. And so as we open up your word, Father, I pray that we will trust you with the things that it says. We trust you enough so that we can apply it to our lives in such a way um, that we live it out faithfully, that we re reflect you faithfully, and that other people would be drawn to you because of what they see in us what they hear from us. So be with us this, these next few minutes. May my words be your words. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to be poking my head up in the corner every once in a while because the monitors down here aren't working. And so... So, and if you might need to help me out with the remote back there, Steve. But we're talking about the topic of honesty. Um, honesty, it has been said, is more than not lying. Honesty is truth telling, it's truth speaking, it's truth living, and truth loving. 
Ironically, that, that phrase, that quote that I just gave you there was said by somebody who belongs to the Mormon church, so they're, they're believing a lie in, in their belief system. And so we're going to talk about a little bit later how just e even honesty is believing and hearing truth as well. But one of the things with honesty is the opposite of it. It really is. It's lies. Um, Charles Spurgeon famously said, a lie can travel halfway around the world while the truth is putting on its shoes. Churchill actually made a little similar quote where he said, a lie can make its way halfway around the world before truth is putting on its pants. I don't know the difference, but you know, it, you, you get the idea that lies spread pretty quickly, but it's important for us, especially those who claim Christ, to be quick to hear and to speak truth, to be people who are true. Unfortunately, though, we're all prone to being dishonest. Uh, we lie all the time. You know, one study says that an average person lies 10 times a day. And it could be small things like when people ask you how you're doing and they say, eh, I'm okay, when they're really not just because they don't want to get into it with you. Or it could be, you know, lies like, are you on your way home yet? Like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm halfway there as you're putting your things in your bag trying to get out the door. Guilty. Yeah. Um, things like that. Or it could be, you know, the really, the really big things. So... But people lie out of fear. They lie to gain advantages in different things. They lie to shirk their responsibilities. Sometimes we lie to hurt others and discredit them. We damage and destroy people's reputations. Sometimes we lie just to pretend that we're godly. There are business people and professionals who lie to get financial gain and take advantage of other people in other situations. Sometimes we just lie simply to avoid embarrassment. You know, we want to save face. We want to escape detection or, or maybe even we lie to defend other people because we don't want to see them hurt or we lie to avoid punishment. There are lots of different ways that we lie too right? Uh, we, can, we can just outright fabricate something completely and tell a false story. You know, our, our kids do that an awful lot. Um, but we adults were a little bit more um, nuanced in how we tell our lies. We, we distort context so that, so that people believe what we want them to believe rather than believing what is true. Or we can be sarcastic, or we lie by leaving out facts, or sometimes we just lie by mistake, and because we think something is true and then we repeat it, you know, the misinformation that we've heard a whole lot about over the last four years or more. Sometimes, and sometimes I think this is one of the worst, is we lie just by flattery. We do it as a way to manipulate people so that we can get them to do what we want them to do or to think about us in a certain way. But lying is not something new, right? That goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden and how Satan deceived Adam and Eve. And it continued on for generations and generations all the way up till this morning, right? Here are a couple of the really good lies that we hear all the time, right? And when I say good lies, I don't mean that in like it's a good thing. But, you know, the, the proverbial, the check is in the mail. And it's not. How about this? And I hate this one because I feel my time's a little bit more valuable this. But the doctor will be right with you. Yeah. No. One size fits all. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. This hurts me more than it hurts you. Oh, my kids hate it when I say that because it's really going to hurt them a lot more than it hurts me. 
And the worst one, I think, in the church is when we lie by saying, you know, I'll pray for you. And we don't. We maybe intend to. Maybe we think it's just a good christian thing to say. Or maybe it's just a way to get out of a conversation. But if we say that we're going to pray for somebody, we should be praying for them. And, and it's one of the reasons why we often are trying to make it a norm, at least in this body of believers, that when we say that we're going to pray for somebody, we'll just do it right then and there with them. Because that's not something that we want to just say passively. So God really wants us to live a life that is characterized by honesty and truth. And so we find a lot of wisdom on this in the book of Proverbs. And so we're going to look at a couple points. And hopefully you have your notes. Um, pull them out in your bulletin. There's some blanks that you can fill in and some other things. Um, <clears throat> just so you know, everything I just told you, that's the introduction part. So uh, We're going to start with uh, Roman numeral 2 there. But we're going to go over, just like I said, three main points. And each of these main points has three subpoints underneath it. Um, but the first one is that there are some benefits to honesty and truth. You know, Psalm 20, uh, 34, verse 12, says, If you want to enjoy life and see many happy days... Keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Living an honest life helps us enjoy life. We'll see happy days. And so here, here are the, th the subpoints between uh, under this. The first one is that one of the benefits is that it preserves life. In a, in a practical, day-to-day -day kind of way, honesty and truth helps preserve our life. Here's some verses that you can write down or take note of for this. Proverbs 12, 19. Truthful lips endure forever, but a lying tongue lasts only a moment. Proverbs 19:5. A false witness will not go unpunished, and a liar will be destroyed. Proverbs 21, 28. A false witness will perish, but a man who listens to the truth will speak forever. So King Solomon here, when he, he is writing these Proverbs, is stating the truisms that people who are honest tend to stay out of trouble. And staying out of trouble tends to lead to a longer, happier life. And conversely, people who tell lies tend to find themselves in trouble. They're probably lying already because they're in trouble or they're causing trouble. And so people who tell lies brings with it the consequences that often lead and can often lead to a, a shortened, less satisfying, less happy life. Um, and we, don't, we don't often think that that is true, but there, there is some, there's some real truth and benefit to just being honest people. You know, sometimes uh, the punishment that somebody might have or the consequence that somebody might have is immediate. You know, that the lie will be forgotten, uh, that you know, they could be hurt, they could, they could die right there on the spot. I'm not saying that's the norm, but, but really the, the Bible talks about the, how severe God thinks of lies when it comes to a reality of, of the sinfulness of it. It says that those who are dishonest, those who are categorized by being a liar, won't inherit the kingdom of God. 
1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. And I, did, I, intentionally, I'm going to say this, I intentionally did not put all the verses up here for you to read on the screen. Because it is my sincere hope that at some point we would be a church who actually has their Bibles with them and is opening up and turning to verses in the Bible. You know, or on a screen. But really to use a physical book. And sometimes I just think putting them up on the screen is cheating. So, that's my honest opinion. So, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10 says, Do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, no men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, people who tell lies about other people to hurt them, nor swindlers, none will inherit the kingdom of God. And that's repeated in Revelation 21, 8 and 22, 15. It says, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral... Those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. Now, we like to just say, well, you know, God saves the severe punishment for those bad sins, you know, for the murderers and all that. You know, that's, that's in the list here. Or like lying, you know, everybody does it. It's not that big of a deal. But multiple times in scriptures, God says, no, if you're living a life that is categorized by your lies. If this is who you are, if this is how you're going about your life, that too leads to punishment, eternal punishment. And we'll talk about it later. There's, there's a way out of that. Jesus is the way out of it. But if you say, I, I haven't done any of the bad things. You know, maybe I've told a few lies here and there, but nothing bad. God's like, that's, that's just as bad in my eyes. So living an honest life preserves our life for the here and now. Now, it doesn't earn you heaven, but... I would say it kind of points you in the right direction. And like I said, we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. But, so the first benefit is that it preserves life. The second one is that it provides a happy life. Proverbs 17, 20. One whose heart is corrupt does not prosper. But one whose tongue is perverse falls into trouble. So, happiness and prosperity. Proverbs 15.4, a soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. You know, being a truthful person is one way to give us a life that provides some happiness and joy. Right. So those of you who know me know that I like the Beatles. I like to work things in there every once in a while. John Lennon said this, maybe not so famously as some of his other quotes, but being honest may not get you a lot of friends, but it'll always get you the right friends. You know, sometimes being honest might push people away from you but it'll also bring the right people around you. Now, there's no chapter and verse that I can point to for that, but that is very much a truism that is in line with Scripture. So, take John Lennon as you will with that. But anyway, Psalms 34, 12 says, if you, when we already said this, but if you want to enjoy life and see many happy days, keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. That's the enjoyment of life. Just be truthful. All right, so third one here with that. You got preserves life, happy life, and that it's a display of integrity. 
Third benefit to honesty is that it displays our integrity. And, and, you know, we know that integrity is that quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. It's moral uprightness. It's an internal consistency or lack of corruption. It's how we behave when nobody is looking, right? That's integrity. And throughout the book of Proverbs and elsewhere, God talks about the importance of integrity in a person's life. Proverbs 11.3. The integrity of the upright guides them, but the crookedness of the treacherous destroys them. Proverbs 13.5. Honest people hate lies, but the words of wicked people are shameful and disgraceful. And Psalm 25:21 says, "May integrity and honesty protect me, for I put my hope in you, God." That our honesty and our truthfulness, it displays our integrity, but it, it's, it's a sign that we have our hearts in the right place, and we're focused on the right things, that we are committed to the right things. You know, I heard it said once that the only people who get mad at you for speaking the truth are those who are living a lie. I don't know if any of you are familiar with uh, the author Dorothy Sayers. She was a friend and contemporary of C.S. Lewis. Um, But she said, to make a deliberate falsification... For personal gain is the last worst depth to which either scholar or artist can descend in work or life. To deliberately say something that is wrong, whether it's in the work that you do or in the relationships that you have or in the things that you're you're pursuing after, is the last and worst depth that we can go to. It shows a lack of integrity when we lie. It shows a lack of our our heart not being in the right place. And so the benefit of honesty and truth really is that we can have life and we can have a happy life and that our integrity would be on display let's look at the next point here that honesty and truth demonstrate our love for others and we talk about this at ebc that our our mission our thing that we are pursuing after is to honor god and love people into a growing relationship with jesus christ But it's really hard to say that we love someone when we're in the habit of being dishonest with them. So the worst thing about being lied to is knowing that you weren't worth somebody telling the truth to. That they didn't love you or respect you enough, no matter how painful it might have been, to tell you the truth about something. So here are some, th- some sub-points underneath that. So how is being honest and truthful demonstrating love for others? Well, one, it elevates the other person over yourself. Now here's how bad Scripture says, how harmful Scripture can be about dishonesty and about lies. There in 20, uh, Proverbs 25, 18, telling lies about others is as harmful as hitting them with an axe, wounding them with a sword, or shooting them with a sharp arrow. You ever thought of it that way? You know, when I lie to somebody, you know, I might as well just take an axe and whack them with it. Or taking an arrow and shooting them with it. None of us would think to do that. 
But that's the analogy that scripture makes, comparison in terms of how hurtful and harmful it is. That's not showing love to somebody when you're being brutal and violent with them like that. But sometimes we think that our words have no real consequence. That sometimes we're, you know, we're just being nice or gracious or just downright deceptive. Basically, when we lie to others, we're appealing to our own sense of self-worth, our own ego. No one starts to build out a relationship based on miscommunication and false beliefs. But when we lie to a person because it makes them feel better or it makes us feel better about ourselves, that's exactly what we're doing. We're building a relationship on miscommunication or false beliefs. You know, many marriages or friendships fall apart because they lack open and honest communication. So we'll tell little white lies to those that we care about rather than being honest enough to address and resolve issues of conflict. So we really don't want to be putting ourselves over the other person. That's contrary to what scripture says in so many other places. Of think of pe- others better than ourselves. But we are putting our own safety, our own comfort, our own sense of preservation ahead of the other person. Either because we don't want them to think bad about us or we are trying to protect them. And I'm never going to say that that's right. But we're not doing people any favors by keeping the truth from it. And we'll talk a little bit about more about the appropriate way to do that, but we don't want to be putting ourselves over the other person. And so that's one way that we are showing love for them is that we are putting them first by being honest and truthful with them. A second thing is that we're showing our love for them just in part because it proves that you can be trusted. And, and I thought, I wasn't quite sure how to word this as I put this down because that sounds a little bit more self-motivating, you know, like, oh, I just want to be proven trustful. But telling somebody that we love them is easy to do, right? I can go up to anybody and just say, hey, hey, bro, I love you. The words are cheap. And they mean very little unless they're backed up with something that shows it, some action. Certainly lying to someone undermines any of previous attempts that we've made to tell them that we really love them. In fact, like rain on a winter day, you know how it quickly melts the the snowman or the, the snow sitting out near front lawn? Lying melts away the trust that one person has in another person. Lies and trust cannot easily coexist. For some of us, they have coexisted in our relationships for a long time. But that, it's not easy, right? Eventually, the former lies will destroy the latter, the trust. Honesty really is the foundation for trust in a relationship. And when we've consistently shown ourselves to be a truthful and honest person, it proves that they can believe the things that we say. As Jesus says, it proves that our yeses mean yes and our noes mean no. You know, this isn't uh, an open invitation for us to be brutally honest in any situation. Well... You know, dear, you know, that really was the worst meal I've ever eaten. We don't want to say that. Or, well, you know, my boyfriend from college, he was better looking than you, and 
and taller and stronger and smarter. But I thought you'd provide a more stable life, so that's why I chose you. Right? Ouch. Yeah, you don't, you don't want that kind of brutal honesty. Hopefully that's nobody in this room. Right? Ephesians 4.15 says that we need to speak the truth in love. In every situation, you know, whether it's confronting somebody or just talking to them, when we are speaking truth, it's not just to, you know, drop a truth bomb on them and walk away. But we need to do it with love. Our words, even when they are honest and truthful, should never be used as a weapon against the other person. And this brings us to the third way that honesty and truth demonstrate our love for others, is that Honesty and truth should be used to move people closer to Jesus. As Christians, and we've talked about this here all the time, as Christians, we are called together as one body, one family. We are to encourage each other. We're to build each other up in the faith. We're to teach truth to each other. And sometimes... That means we need to confront people when we see them caught up in some kind of sin or living in a way that is inconsistent with our claimed faith in Jesus. And that kind of honest speaking can be really hard to do, right? Nobody likes to confront other people. Proverbs 27.6 says, The wounds of a friend can be trusted. There are times when we as a church, when we as brothers and sisters in Christ, need to speak truth into a friend's life. And we know that it's probably going to hurt them a little bit. It may even offend them a little bit. But we know we need to do it because whatever it is, we see that they're being foolish. They're making a series of poor choices. There's sinful or destructive behavior. Or they're being critical. Or they're having an attitude of envy or pride. There's uh, any number of things that we could point out in any of our lives, right? And those kind of truths are hard to confront somebody with. We don't want to hurt. We don't want to offend them. Or maybe we don't do it because we don't want them to be mad at us for getting all up in their business. I heard it said that telling the truth and making someone cry is better than telling a lie and making them smile. No, of course, I'm not saying tell them the truth so that you can make them cry. There's a difference there. But telling somebody the truth that hurts, that brings tears, is much better than glossing over a situation and lying to them and making them feel like nothing's wrong. You know, a surgeon doesn't use a scalpel just to cut somebody open and leave them bleeding on an operating table. The purpose for the surgeon to cut somebody open is to go in, get the cancer out, fix a torn ligament or transplant an organ or something that's going to bring healing to their life. And yes, there might be a scar afterwards. There will probably be a scar afterwards. But in the end, hopefully it has fixed the problem that they went in for. In the same way, our honesty with people can be wounds to the person that we're talking to. But that purpose should never be to just cut them open and leave them hurt and humiliated and broken. Our words should help move them closer to Jesus, to help them see their blind spots so that they can grow in their faith and knowledge of him. And yeah, there might be scars from that. But hopefully there'll be healing as well in that. You see, 
I would be lying to you if I only told you what you wanted to hear. It's not loving. It's not loving if I didn't warn you of the dangers of sin. That would be lying to you. I'd be lying to you and not loving you if I didn't teach you what God's word says on various issues. And I'd be lying to you and not loving you if I was presenting to you some kind of my truth. I hate that phrase. Never mind. Um, Sometimes we like to couch some of those things up in, in, in little Christian things of saying, well, I'm just showing them grace. And there are times that that is true. We need to show people grace. But you know what? It's not grace to somebody if they don't know that what they're doing is wrong. Otherwise, we're just letting them do the wrong thing. And there's no grace in that. The grace is when they're confronted with it, yet we still love them anyway. Unfortunately, there's an awful lot of this going on in our churches today, both from the pulpit and from our pews or folding chairs. Especially when it comes to how our culture has defined or redefined issues of marriage and sexuality and gender and justice and all these things that are going on in our, in our society today. That rather than we as the church standing up and say, no, this is what God's word says about this, we are often finding ourselves increasingly more accepting of people's defined identity or people's choices or people's feelings or needs and other things rather than saying, yes, I hear what you're saying, but this is what God's word says. And we as a church, as God's people, need to be able to speak honestly into a situation. Not judgmentally, but speak truthfully and honestly. There's a whole 50 other sermons in there with that, so I'm just going to leave that as it is. We need to show love to people, and one way that we show love to people is being truthful and honest with them. All right, so the next thing, I'd say what honesty and truth does, honesty and truth are reflections of our relationship with God. You know, the Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in those who tell the truth. He delights in those who are honest. I want to be in a relationship where God is delighting in me. Don't you? That's the kind of relationship I want. I want God to be happy with me. But here's how it works. It's just not that you telling the truth makes him happy with you. We have to understand these things first. And the first one is that God is the source of truth. You know, Jesus said in John 18, I came to bring truth to the world. All who love the truth recognize that what I say is true. Our God is absolute truth. It is impossible for him to be otherwise. In fact, God is the source of all truth. Our God, we claim to believe in, to trust in, our God, who is present everywhere, who knows all things, he totally understands what is real, what is right, what is true. Whatever he says is completely accurate. You know, Moses talked about this in the book of Numbers when he was considering God's truthfulness. He said, God is not a man that he should lie. He's not a human that he should change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? 
Has he ever promised and not carried it through? God is the essence of truthfulness and the source of truth. And whatever God says is absolutely right. And whatever he promises will always be fulfilled. And God wants us to know the truth. When Jesus prayed for his disciples, asking God that his disciples, and ultimately us, that we would be sanctified in the truth, because God's word is true. And if God is the source of truth, then we need to be looking to him and to his book to see what that is and what that means and how we can get it. And the Bible helps us to know and understand the truth about him, about ourselves, and about life. And if we're looking to other sources to define truth, then we're looking in all the wrong places. So God has also manifested truth to us in the person of Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, I am the way and I am the truth. And I'm the life. And while many people claim to know the truth, only Jesus can honestly claim that he was the truth. He can claim to be truth. God is the source of truth, and we have to start with that. The second thing we, we understand in this and how it reflects our relationship with God is that honesty and truth demonstrates our trust in him and not a fear. Because many times we will lie out of fear, right? We will lie because we have a fear of being punished. No, officer, I didn't know I was speeding. Fear of embarrassment. Why was I late? Oh, well, it certainly wasn't because I spilled coffee on myself as I was walking out the door. No, I, it was something else. You know, we don't want to be embarrassed by our own clumsiness. There's a fear of criticism from others, or there's a fear of conflict that might ensue we lie for a whole bunch of reasons, and a lot of them stem from a heart of fear of what might happen otherwise. But God knows everything. God sees everything. And our willingness to be honest and tell the truth to each other, and even recognizing the truth to him, demonstrates that we are trusting God in the midst of that situation. That we are trusting God even if we may get punished. And that's okay. Will we trust him? Are we going to trust God even if we're going to face criticism for standing up for what is right and true? One of my favorite books of all times, and I don't know what this says about my personality, is Fox's Book of Christian Martyrs. It is, it's a dark book. I mean, it's talking about people throughout the ages who were killed for their faith. And sometimes in the most gory and awful ways. But I love that book. Because in it, it demonstrates, or it's clear how that there are men and women who died for their faith who probably didn't have to because they could have lied and recanted and said that they didn't have faith in Jesus. But they chose to stand in the truth to proclaim the truth, even knowing what the consequences were. You know, we often say, yeah, I would, live, I would die for my faith. I would die for Jesus. And sometimes I think we would, although sometimes I think that if we could lie to get out of it, we might be willing to do that too, because we, we think of our own lives more important than the truth. 
But certainly it's harder, it's easier to say that we would die for our faith than it is for us to say that we would live for our faith. And live for our faith in such a way that we do not compromise with the truth and compromise with God's word. And seeing the Bible says that love casts out all fear. And if we love and trust God, we won't have a fear for what our consequence might be. That we could speak and live honestly and not be concerned what someone else might say or someone else might do. And the third thing here with this one is that honesty and truth are reflections of a relationship with God and that it properly represents God himself. See, our honesty is one way that we as Christians can properly represent God to an unbelieving world. So, Proverbs 6, verses 16 through 19, says that there are six things that the Lord hates. No seven things he detests. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that kill innocent blood, a heart that plots evil, feet that race to do wrong, a false witness who pours out lies, and a person who sows discord in a family. You know, two of those seven are are pretty specific lies. You know, a lying tongue and a false witness who pours out lies. But a person who sows discord in a family, that's probably lie-based as well. And, and feet that race to do, there's falseness in that. God hates and detests those things. And if we are living lies, we are not representing God. We are not doing things that he wants for us or has directed us to do. We are doing the things that he detests. Honesty is embedded in, in the Ten Commandments, right? The Ninth Commandment says, do not give false testimony against your neighbor. In other words, don't lie about them so that they're wrongly accused or convicted. And that is reiterated over and over in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 19.5, 19.8, 21, 28, 24, 28, Proverbs 25, 18, all these talk about lying and false witnesses. But honesty is also in the commands that God gives about how we should conduct our business. And when we conduct our business properly and honestly and speak truthfully, we're reflecting God's heart and God's character in that. Proverbs 11, 1 and 16, 11 talk about how the Lord detests dishonest scales, but how honest scales are from him. And he detests it when we cheat other people. When we say one thing or represent something one way when we know that it's not that way. And both of those Proverbs, Proverbs 11, 1 and 16, 11, reflect what Moses was teaching, what was given to Moses by God in the Mosaic Law found in Leviticus 19 and Deuteronomy 25. God says, do not use dishonest scales when you do business. Don't cheat. It says that God detests anyone who does these things and anyone who deals dishonestly. And why does he detest it? Because it's against his character. It's against who he is. It's against what he wants for us in reflecting him. And if you look in Deuteronomy 25 and you look at the laws that he tells his people to follow, often he's going back to say, because remember what I did for you. I want you to live this way. 
and to do these things because of what I did for you, because of my character and what I've, I've shown you that you should do the same thing. And when we're cheating and living dishonestly, we are not reflecting him. All right, so that, this brings us to uh, the last point in your notes and what our response should be. And I'm going to give us three things. And they're as, as simple as this, that we need to come to the truth, we need to listen to the truth, and we need to speak and live the truth. So first and foremost, our response should be to come to the truth. And what I mean is this, if you have never given your life to Christ, if you've never trusted in Jesus to pay for the penalty of your sins, you need to first come to him who is the embodiment of truth. As we just read a few minutes ago, that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. There is no way of ensuring forgiveness of your sins without Jesus. There's no way of having hope for eternity without Jesus. And there's no way that we could live a life categorized by truth and honesty without him. So come to him. May today be that day if you've never done that before. And if you're a Christian, come to Jesus. You need to come as well to come to him because we can't live this Christian life on our own. We won't be truthful or honest by sheer willpower. We are sinful, broken people and we are in the habit of self-preservation. But Jesus said, he told his disciples, I will ask the Father that he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. The spirit of truth. As Christians, we have the Holy Spirit indwelling us, empowering us, and we need to depend on him to live out this Christian life and to live a life of truth and honesty. So come to the truth. Listen to the truth. We need to be aware of the voices that are speaking into our life. Are they good and godly sources of truth? I hear so many people whose worldviews have been shaped by NPR or Huffington Post or, or Rush Limbaugh or any number of other things. And that, that's our source of truth. But there are so many vo- verses that talk about what we as believers should be listening to, what we should be taking in. Psalms 1, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly or stand in the way of sinners nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. We'd be listening to God's truth. Proverbs 14, 7, stay away from fools for you won't find knowledge on their lips. Proverbs 19, 20, listen to advice and accept discipline And at the end, you will be counted among the wise. Basically, these and all the others that get into God's word and only put into practice those things that are consistent with his word. And lastly, speak and live the truth. Again, as we quoted at the beginning, it's more than just not telling lies. Yes, we need to be honest with our words, and we need to be honest with how we conduct our business. But as Christians, we need to be mindful how we live our lives. We need to live honestly. See, an ambassador doesn't have the right to set his own agenda or create his own policies. An ambassador is to speak and operate according to the agenda of the president. The Bible says that we are ambassadors for Christ. Our job is to do what he says. The things that we say are to be the things that he said. 
We don't get to redefine the issues because our modern sensibilities make us uncomfortable. We don't get to redefine the morality of sex or gender or anything else because certain practices are more accepted today. We need to speak and live according to God's truth. Unfortunately, I believe that one of the reasons why so many people have walked away from the faith or walked away from the church is because there are too many of us who claim to trust in Christ and claim to believe what the Bible teaches, but our lives don't reflect it. We live in such a way that people don't see it. So come to the truth. Listen to the truth and speak the truth. And so that we would have lives that are honest and truthful and point people to Jesus. So pray with me. Father, hmm. I, so often our tendency in life is to say and do things that protect ourselves. We are just in that habit of doing. And we want to be men and women who walk in your truth, speak your truth, who are honest in all of our dealings. And so God, point out those things to us in our life where we have have shied away from that, where we tend to protect ourselves, where we tend to to not live according to your truth. You know, we want people, when they look at us, not to just say, oh, he's a good person, or not just to say that we can be trusted, although we want to be trusted, but ultimately, God, we want people, when they look at us, to see a difference that your son has made so that they would be drawn to Jesus and that they would come to know him too. So change us and make us more like him. And it's in his name we pray. Amen.